Use the following information and the sign test to determine if the median salary for college professors at FIU exceeds $72,000. Among 50 randomly chosen professors, 42 had salaries higher than $72,000, 7 had salaries less than $72,000, and 1 had a salary equal to $72,000. Alright, so first thing we see obviously is that this is clearly a sign test problem, right? It says use the sign test. So there's no doubt about what method we have to use. Then they go on to give us some information, and it's not laid out like we normally see the sign test material given. Um, it's given, you know, kind of just verbally expressed. And the other thing about it is that this sample size is rather large, right? Large sample size of 50. So one thing I want to do is to um, talk to you about what's done in most stats classes, in including my own actually at, at FIU. I would tend to um, give my students a formula to make this problem um, sort of cookie cutter. So I would give them a formula that will always work for them and that way, you know, uh, they can never go wrong. They just plug the numbers and the formulas on the formula card, you know. But I, I generally don't like to do that sort of thing, you know. I, I'd rather, you know, for my sake, have you think through the problem with something you already know. Because then, first of all, there's less to remember, right? And it, I think that, you know, reverting back to something you've already done, it helps you to see why um, methods you learned in the past were sometimes helpful in future problems. So I think what I want to do here is talk about doing this problem by using the normal approximation method. Um, we actually did a few videos earlier on that subject, so the normal approximation procedure um, is useful for a problem like this. So let's talk about how you would use that to do this problem. What you would do is you would say, okay, first I got to get my claim and my test stat and all that stuff. So let's start out with that like we've always done before for the sign test. The claim here is that, you know, it says use the medians, use, use the sign test to determine if the median salary for college professor at FIU exceeds. So that means the median is greater than 72,000, right? That's what we're asked to do. Now, HO, of course, and HA are done in the normal way we always have done. Greater than would mean that the claim is HA. And HO would be that the median is less than or equal to 72,000, just the opposite idea that HA and the claim are expressing. All right, from there, we would normally um, use like our uh, test stat step or data step. For the data step, what we can do is we can say what? We can take what they told us here and we can say that, you know, N here is actually 49. Do you see why N is 49 here? Because we have one salary that's equal to 72K. So we want to throw out that salary, right? We don't want to use that salary. Remember, anytime there's a tie, we discard it, right? So one salary equal to 72K, we'll discard that salary and only look at the N equals 49 for the problem. Then from there, among the other values that we're dealing with, we see that we had, what, 42 that were higher, right? So 42 that were higher and seven that were less. Now, what is the test stat that we're supposed to use for a problem where we have a greater than symbol. Well, normally S is supposed to be what? The number of values greater than, than in this case, 72,000, right? So how many values are greater than 72,000 in this problem? Well, in this problem it says 42 had salaries greater than that. So my S is 42. So I have my n, I have my s. Notice there's no alpha given in the problem. I suppose we can choose alpha to be equal to 0 0.05 by default in that scenario since they didn't give us an alpha. Okay, so we have n, we have alpha, we have our test stat. The next thing we normally do is to work out a p-value. This is just following the normal procedure for the sign test, right? Well, for the p-value here, it's not going to be easy to go to the table since n is 49, right? It's too big. The tables don't have that value. And when we ran into that situation in the past, we used the normal approximation. What that means is we're going to use a bell curve, right? Use a bell curve. And when we use the bell curve, we're going to need to know what the mean is. Well, it turns out that the mean for the bell curve, since we're assuming a binomial distribution, is going to be n times p. Now, in our case, remember, we're going to be looking for the probability that we would have this number of values greater than, right? So it's going to be basically when we do the p-value, so we're trying to come up with this p-value, the probability that x is greater than or equal to s, right? 
So in this case, 42. This is what we want to calculate. We're trying to figure out what's that chance? What's the probability that x is greater than or equal to 42? Because that's my p-value, as it's always been in all our sign test procedure, right? The probability that x is greater than or equal to 42. So the mean for that is going to be n times p. So in this case, it'll be 49 times 0.5. So we'll just do half of 49, right? So half of 40 is 20 plus another 4.5. So I'm going to have 24.5 for the mean. And then for the standard deviation, we have to do something similar to that. We're going to do um, the square root of, remember, n times p times q, right? So in this case, it's the n times p. So 49 times 0.5 times 0.5. Remember, q has to add to p to give you 1, right? So if this is a half, the other one must be a half. Okay, so let's do 49 times 0.5 times 0.5 first. That gives us 12 and a quarter, and we'll take the square root of 12 and a quarter, 0.25, and see what we get. We get the answer 3 and a half. So we get 3.5 as our result. Okay, so 3.5 is going to be our standard deviation. So now we know the mean and the standard deviation for our curve. Okay, so now let's put an axis here. We normally have a z-axis centered at zero and an x-axis centered at the mean. The mean here is 24 and a half, 24.5. The standard deviation, remember, is 3 and a half. Don't forget that. We're going to need that in a moment, right? Now, we're going to put the x value in question here. We're looking for the probability that x is greater than or equal to 42. So we would put 42 on the right-hand side, correct? And we would draw a line, and since we're looking for greater than or equal to, we would shade the tail in the right-hand side. Only one small detail though, when doing this type of problem with the binomial approximation, we don't want to use the exact number we have because if we're going to the right, we want to make sure that we start a little before the 42 to make sure we sweep up all the area, including the little bit before that, because actually we're trying to approximate a discrete distribution by a continuous distribution. And remember, the little rectangles in a discrete distribution for 42 would actually dip down to 41 and a half, right? So basically we have to take away 0.5 from this by starting just a little bit before 42 and sweeping over to the right from there. So that's going to mean that we're really going to cross this number out and use 41.5. That's the number we're going to use. That's called continuity correction. We would have learned that earlier on, but you certainly have that video that talks about doing this, so you can look back and refer to that. Okay, so once we use 41.5, the rest is pretty straightforward. We're going to use the z formula to convert that into a z-score. So we have x minus the mean over sigma. x here is 41.5 minus the mean of 24.5 over sigma, which we said was 3.5. Let's see what that gives us as an answer for the z-score. We're going to have 41.5 minus 24.5. Close up the brackets and divide by three and a half. When we do that, we get 4.57. 4. Oh, sorry, 4.857. So let's call it 4.86, just to round off the two places. 4.86. This is 4.86. All right. Now, normally we would go to our z chart, look this up, and get the area from here to here. And then we would subtract that from 0.5. But 4.86 is off the charts. In other words, that area is um, off our chart. Our chart usually goes up to 3.09. Sometimes they go to 3.99. They don't ever go to 4.86 to my knowledge. I've never seen a Z chart that goes that far. So that means basically this area here is approximately zero. If you want to know what it is precisely, I can use my calculator to get it. So let's go ahead and do that. If we were to look this up on a Z chart, if there was a Z chart that had 4.86, we would actually get the area to be between 0 and 4.86. That area would turn out to be 4 point, or 0.499999, basically. So this area would turn out to be 0.4999, and then two more nines, right? And then finally, a 4. So I have to go that far out, because if I try to round this off at all, what's going to happen? It's going to turn out to be you know, 0.5, in which case there's zero area in the tail. Now, I take that area, if I do 0.5 minus that answer, right? Now I'll come up with this it's scientific notation, but it's showing that this area in the tail is 0 0.0000000, 000 000, six zeros, and then finally 588. 
So that's our answer, six zeros and five eight eight. So bottom line is, is this is our p-value. Our p-value, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 42, that works out to be basically approximately equal to 0 .00000588. A very small p-value and since the p-value here is less than alpha right since the p-value is less than alpha which is 0.05 we are going to say that we reject HO and therefore support HA and so since our claim is HA we'll use this word and we'll say the sample data supports the claim right the sample data supports the claim Sample data supports the claim. And so the, basically, the sample data supports the claim that the median uh, salary at FIU for professors is greater than $72,000 a year. Um, so incidentally, again, you, know, this, you might say, well, gee, I don't know how to get this decimal here. Well, of course, if it was a normal z-score, we would just look it up on the z-chart, and you could do all the rest on your own. So don't let this 4.8 confuse you, it's just because it turns out that this is a very um, high number here very high amount of the professors had values that were greater than 72,000 so of course this number turns out to be a very small probability which means this is a very large probability and this is off the charts but if it had been something like 2.86 you could have looked up 2.86 got the area from here here taken that area subtracted it from 0.5 got the area in the tail and then once you had that answer you know you would fill out the rest of the problem but either way I think that doing it this way kind of um, allows you to avoid having to just memorize the use of a formula. You know, you know how to do it using something you've already learned, which is binomial approximation, where you would have either seen this in Stats 1 or you would have seen it in your Stats 2 class if you are watching my videos, because I did a few examples, three examples actually, of the binomial approximation using the bell curve. So anyways, I think it's a great little application of that technique, and uh, it helps you to avoid having to memorize just a strict formula. If you want to memorize formula, I'm sure your textbook has one or your professor will give you one.